Ah, spring. It's like Mother Nature just threw a massive flower party and invited all these cute pollinators. But amongst all this floral fabulousness, there's some serious fruit growing to get down to. So we're going to have a look at the stone fruit that I've got in the garden and how I take care of them. Uh, try to take care of them, it's time. They are rather labour intensive. And we'll look at some of the bugs and problems that we have, how we can try and minimise the, uh, the damage and maximise our crop. So with that in mind, let's get stoned fruited. Off we go. What we have here is a Narambeen plum. He's not been doing terribly well. I got hit very badly by the leaf curl, which I've sprayed. And also our false winter, spring. Yeah, false spring. So it all started to flower and bloom, and then it got cold again. So a lot of the stuff died off. But as we can see, lots of new blooms coming on, new growth. So hopefully he will be good. And what we have here is a Nectese. This wasn't hit too badly with the leaf curl. And I'll show you what leaf curl looks like when we get to the nectarine. But he's doing quite nicely. I trimmed it right back over um, winter. And we haven't got any flowers yet, but that's not, not a problem. Hopefully we'll get some soon. These are grown down the side of my house in partial shade. They get full sun in the afternoon, but only for a short period of time. Uh, and that stops them getting too hot in our stinking hot summers. This is a Mariposa plum that I bought from Guildford Garden Centre. It's still looking nice and healthy. And I've got it in a, a large 75 litre pot, I think it is. So we'll let that get a little bit bigger. I've got two like this, which you may ask, what are they? And I'll tell you, it's a stick in a pot. These are cherry trees. As I said, I've got two. The other one's over here. And I'm becoming a believer that you cannot grow cherries in Perth because of the temperature. When we had a week-long run of 45 degrees, uh, these black pots just cooked the root system. So I'm pretty sure they are ex-cherry trees. It's defunct. It's dead. It's fallen off its perch. It has ceased to be. It's expired and gone to meet its maker. In here, this larger tree is an unknown plum tree and for some reason it stopped giving fruit hello crow and it doesn't look like it's even flowering or coming on with new growth so that might be also an ex plum tree or an ex tree i'll give it a bit longer before i decide to cut it down but it it needs a prune which i will do very shortly and i'll actually show you how that pruning goes but we'll give it a major sort of cut back bring it back to a manageable height because i can't get up there the only things that'll get up there are fruit fly. If you're interested in that melony thing, that has gone absolutely wild, which is unfortunate because I don't particularly like it. Chilla coyote, or fig leaf uh, gourd. Uh, it's rather bland, lots of seeds. When it gets to that size, very stringy. So I'm gonna pull all that out. I'll probably get it coming up for years yet, but we'll get rid of it. This one here is my nectarine, absolutely covered with fruit. But unfortunately, I haven't had a lot of luck with uh, harvesting this. A couple of different reasons, I think. Number one is the fruit fly. They really seem to love this particular tree. So even though it gives me lots of young fruit, like we can see here, all over the place, they tend to rot, and I'm pretty sure that's fruit fly. The other thing it gets, really badly leaf curl if we have a look on there you can see these orangey reddy blisters that come up that's a fungus fungal disease that lives in the ground i believe now this is a lot better than it was last year but it's taken me years to get it back to this stage it was really really bad for many years i didn't know exactly what it was so while i was learning which i still am always learning so this is one that we'll actually spray with um, a spray I'm not terribly keen on which is the rich grow uh, fruit fly spray which I'll talk about fairly shortly um, but because there's no flowers on here I'll very carefully spray around here because I don't want to spray my lime tree which is in flower and attracting bees and look we've got 
lovely insects hovering around there. Hopefully we can see him. It's a good pollinator, that fella. So I'll very carefully spray this, probably with a hand sprayer, just a trigger pack. Make sure that we don't get any of that pyrethrin based sprays on our um, flowering plants. Okay, this one here is my apricot tree. Another one that I haven't had a lot of luck with, and summer may also have killed this one. So it's looking very bare. Doesn't appear to be any new growth, but I will leave it a while longer. And I'll trim that one back a bit, get him back to a manageable height. Uh, if it does, and if it blooms, good. If it doesn't, I think we'll take it out and we'll put some other trees in here. So unfortunately, I've never had an apricot off that. The plum tree, which looks more like a chilla coyote tree at the moment, that has been very heavy fruiting in the past, but not for the last couple of years. And that's because my other plum tree died, uh, so it had no cross fertilizer. One I will mention while I'm here, well, not stone fruit, is my pink guava. This has got a nice pink flesh inside. The reason I'm mentioning it here is fruit fly love it. So we've really got to make sure that we treat this one really well for fruit fly, put traps on it, because the fruit fly will come from miles around to get to that one. Let's get in and make some deterrents and other traps and things to try and keep our fruit fly under control. We won't be spraying for leaf curl because it's too late, except on these. Uh, the leaf curl we've got to spray for when we're just starting to approach the new growth stage. By the way, if you're interested in tyres, if an attempt at doing potato towers didn't work, now I'm stuck with the tyres. Leaf curl, we've got to spray well before the um, first budding, and then at first budding, and then after that, and we'll just keep going a few times a year until we eventually bring it under control like it has with the nectarin. So one of the main things we've got to do when we've got stone fruit is try and control the fruit fly. Uh, and that can be a bit of an issue. So I've got several ways I'm going to try and keep them under control. Um, and I'm going to make up some traps, which I've shown how to make before. Uh, I will link, tag, wherever it appears. Uh, so you can go and have a look at that in full, but I'll just quickly do it again here. We've got some things to repel the fruit fly, which again, I've shown how to make that up. And then we've got one I don't like using too much. So we'll go through them by least preferred to most preferred. So starting off, we have this. This is a off the shelf, says naturally based fruit fly concentrate. Yeah, it seems to work reasonably well at keeping them away, but it contains pyrethrins. Now, they are not good for bees either. So if the bee comes in contact with it, it's not gonna do the bee any good. So you wanna avoid this particularly when your uh, flowers are on the stone fruit. Um, keep the bees well and healthy. Again, I don't really like using too much of this. I'll spray it on the young fruit, and then as the fruit starts to mature, I may use this again, being very, very careful not to spray it anywhere near things that are flowering and the bees are gonna go. So I'm gonna be very careful with that. Next one I'm going to try or use is garlic oil. Rumor has it, Fruit fly are actually vampires, and they don't like garlic. Anyway, it seemed to have worked in the past. I've quite often added some chilli in there, which is more for aphids and other things. But this is just garlic oil. Again, check out my eco-friendly video. You'll see how to make this up. It takes a little bit of time, but very much worthwhile. Uh, and we'll dilute this right down, so this will make a lot of spray. But then I think there is the one which is most effective, and that's to trap them. Now, I'll put the traps away from the... Uh, the garlic sprayed trees uh, because you don't want to attract them and then detract them. Is that English? Yeah, you don't want to put your attractants near your stuff that's trying to push them away. So it's really easy to make this. And what we do is we start with our Vegemite or yeast extract or Marmite or yeast if that's all you've got. And I've got some hot water here. We shall pop that in. Now, I'm making enough here for two cool drink bottles full of it. So we'll pop that in and stir it around a bit. We have our sugar. We 
And as I said, a detailed method is all on my other video. So let's dissolve that and spill it everywhere. We have one freshly picked orange, which we could peel and just put the peel in, but I'm just going to throw the whole thing in. Maybe. That's a squirty orange. As I said before, this is for the aroma. It gives it a nice scent of rotting fruit, which fruit fly really like. Now, we just top these up with a little bit more cold water. Put the lid on. A little bit of a shake. When we're ready to hang it by the tree, just pop a few holes Two or three holes around here, just with a stick of knife in there. Don't make it too big. Fruit fly will get in, they won't find their way out. And they'll eventually drown. I believe this will only attract fruit fly. I've never seen any bees in my traps before. So nice and safe for them. No poisons, you could drink that if you were really weird. I suppose if it ferments enough, some people would like to drink it. But effective, harmless, safe, wonderful. This is also good, keeps them away. Um, without actually harming anything, but again, because it's not killing off the fruit fly, it's not overly effective. And this just occasionally when there are no flowers around, so it's not going to hurt the bees. So just give it a, a spray around the fruit directly, keep the fruit fly hopefully off the fruit, and if they do land on it, they'll die. But as I said, it's just as effective on bees, so don't use it near flowers. Okay. So let's get this lot out and a bit of a spray around and see how our trees are doing. Silly me, I forgot to add in one that I do use occasionally and it's this one here and I'll put a picture of it up in the uh, corner so you can actually see it a little better. Um, but it's a naturally occurring bacteria called Spinosad and this affects the fruit fly, kills them off. It, it's set in a thick liquid which is molasses I think or something like that but it is sugar based. Now. As far as the toxic effect, um, it's non-toxic to fish, earthworms a little bit toxic, uh, and birds all fine, but it is highly toxic to bees. But there's no evidence, according to the Oregon State University, that has any effect uh, once it has dried. So <clears throat> it's fine for bees and other uh, beneficial insects, as long as the spray is dried. And I think that's because they're no longer attracted to the sugar base that's in the uh, material. Uh, but that being said, if it's still toxic to bees, it's toxic to bees. So I'll be very careful where I use that. Um, won't put it on any flowering fruit trees. And I'll be very careful where and how I use it and how often I use it. The same sort of thing as the rich grow fruit fly uh, bait that I showed earlier on in the video. To put up the fruit fly traps, really complicated. As I said, we just put a little hole in here. Another one on the other side. And if you have a look there, that's the sort of size we need. Fruit fly are quite small, they can crawl in there. This tree is a little bit different. I'm actually going to trap on this tree because I'm using the rich grow uh, attractant as well. So it's fine to put the trap on the same tree as, uh, as we're going to put the, uh, the baits on. However, as we'll see in a minute, we'll do it differently with our other tree, other stone, tr stone fruit tree. Some of the fruit trees, like this uh, plum here, aren't looking like they're coming to life for spring yet, which is a bit of a worry. So what we're going to do is see if it's playing possum. So I'm going to take a knife and just give a little cut in here. If you come in, we can see it's green. That means this is alive, it's just still dormant. So we'll just cover that up again. So I'm not going to cut that out just yet. We'll check our apricot as well. No, we won't, because if you come in here, I've just noticed something. Our apricot is starting to, to bud, which is great, in a way. Yeah, we've got a bit of a problem because now I can't prune this. 
Um, it's already started to prepare itself for new growth. I don't want to prune it or we'll get a rush of new growth on it and no fruit. So we're just going to leave this and we're not going to do any pruning now. I might trim the plum back a little bit, but not the apricot. Okay, let's get the other trap up. So here we have my narum bean plum. And if we come in and have a look, we've got lots of lovely flowers on it. And looking up at this one, we can see that the flowers are just starting to burst out there too. So we've got lots of flowers, but that doesn't necessarily mean we'll have lots of fruit. It very much depends on the pollination. So we have the birds and the bees. Sort of like a, a tinder for plants and bees. Swiping left or what do they do? Swipe left, swipe right? I don't know what way it works. But just because we've got flowers doesn't mean they're all going to turn into fruit. We've got to make sure that we've got our pollinators flowering at the same time. And that's a great reason to start your, um, your logbook or diary. I use my video uh, fruit tree diaries to keep track of it. But this will allow you to look at when your trees are flowering, when the cross-pollinators are flowering, and try and get them into sync so they can meet up and have a good time. The other thing to be aware of is we can have storms which will blow the flowers off, hail, that sort of thing. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily mean that because of flowering we're going to actually get the fruit. And that's where, in a pot like this, is actually quite handy because it's sheltered, sheltered by the house. So we hope that this one's actually going to give us a few fruit. We just need one of its buddies to start flowering, which they haven't yet. Right, let's move along. So here we've got the uh, narum bean and the, can never say it right, nectar, nectar Z. Um, and we are going to use repellents on this. So we're going to try and keep the fruit flies away from it, which means we don't want to trap. So what we'll do is we'll come over to this side. So with the trees over here and the baits over here, I'm hoping the fruit fly will congregate around there, go into the trap and die. And they won't like these because we will put that garlic oil uh, spray on them and try and keep the uh, fruit fly away from the tree. So there we have it. A little bit of a tour on what I'm doing with my stone fruit for this season. Earlier I said I might prune and I'll do a video on that. I won't because the plum tree and the apricot are just starting to spring into life. And if I do give them any sort of prune, we'll just get a a rush of new growth, which is not what we want if we want to get uh, some fruit off them. So I'll actually leave them alone, when I roof, and we'll give them a trim after they've finished fruiting. So hope you enjoyed that. Please like, subscribe, join in, watch me fumble around and see if I get any stone fruit this season. Catch you in the garden.